Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about control systems topics and in this video I will discuss the concept of stability and in particular we will dis discuss the root Herbert stability criterion. So before we dive in the root Herbert stability criterion let's first look at the concept of stability. Now in the figure here on the left side you can see what is a stable, a neutral and an unstable system is. In terms of the location of the pole, so if you have a pole on the left hand side, your system will be stable and you will have a stable response as shown here. And if your pole is at the origin, it's just at the edge, which means a neutral system. It's also called marginal stable system. And if your pole is on the right side, you have an unstable system. And this is pictorially shown here for three cases. The most important concept in control systems is actually stability. If your system is not stable, you can do whatever you want with all the other parameters like noise, distortion, but it is not useful if your stability is not solved. So your stability is the most important concept. Now, a system can be of course linear, but can be also non-linear. And most systems in nature are non-linear but it can be linearized so that is helpful to first linearize system if you want to for example use Laplace transform or other, any other method to work out your dynamic system your system must be linearized or must be a linear system but if you cannot do that that is also a condition then you need to solve that with a different method for linear system, we can use Nyquist or the root Hurwitz stability uh, method, which, which is shown here. So I will discuss the root Hurwitz stability method. And for nonlinear system, we can apply the Lyapunov stability method, which is a little bit complicated compared to the first one. Now, Nyquist and the root Hurwitz methods are relatively easy and straightforward. So that is good. But if you need to work out a nonlinear system stability, then you are actually, uh, you can use your Lyapunov stability method, which requires a tri trial function to investigate the stability. And that is not always trivial and also not easy to find. This requires a lot of experience, this part of your analysis with the Lyapunov stability method. So it is quite complicated. But what is actually the difference between the Nyquist stability method and the root Hurwitz stability method? Now, the most, the actual difference between the Nyquist stability method and the root stability method is the way how you determine your stability. If you look at the Nyquist stability method, you use the graphical method and also you use some analysis to determine the value of your proportional control gain that results in a stable system. In a root Herbert stability method, it can be carried out without any sketching or may making a plot of your body or a polar. So it is very handy. Why? Because it is not always possible to make a, even an easy sketch of a body plot or a polar plot for a little bit complicated system. So if you want to focus on your design and just want to make a sketch of a very complicated system that is even maybe not doable. And Ruth Herbert's stability method allows us to determine the stability analytically. So, what is the Ruth Herbert stability criterion? It is actually focused on the polynomial equation. So it tells us Whatever there are unstable roots in the polynomial equation without actually solving for them. So we don't solve the roots, we don't care about where they are. We would like to know if they are on the left hand side, which is of course a stable system, or on the right hand side of your complex plane, which is res which result in an unstable system. The polynomial equation is the polynomial of your denominator of your transfer function. So your transfer function the denominator of that 
will be your polynomial equation, which will you use for determining the stability using the return with stability criterion. So it applies to polynomials with only finite number of terms, which is a required condition. And information about absolute stability can be obtained from the coefficients of the characteristic equation. So by setting up your characteristic equation, you can determine the coefficients, and from that we will use the Nyquist, or I mean the root Herbert stability criterion. And that's again from the transfer function. So it is, it is required that you have the transfer function first. And the criterion states that the number of roots of your characteristic equation with positive real part is equal to the number of sign changes of your coefficient in the first column of the root area, array. So this is a very long sentence. What this actually means is in a very uh, short uh, form is the number of roots which you have in your characteristic equation and also the sign changes in the first column will determine your stability. We will do that uh, shortly with an example. This will be clear when we work out a numerical example. But why do we need a root Herbert stability anyway? We can use, of course, a computer. Just simulate it and exact location of your poles and zeros are there, so why? The thing is, the advantage of and the power actually of this method lies in a design rather than the analysis. So we are not really interested in the an analyzing a stability of a system. We would like to also design for a specific uh, proportional control or gain for, to design the stability. So that is actually the power of this. So for example, if you have an unknown parameter in your denominator of your transfer function, it can be difficult to determine via just a computer simulation the range of this parameter to yield stability. Of course, you can try trial and error or horror, I will say, to answer the stability question, which might take a considerable amount of time. So you also need to know what you actually do, such that you can carry out your following step much more easily. Okay, let's look at the procedure for the stability, root Herbert stability criterion procedure. What you first do, you write your characteristic equation of your closed loop system in the following form. This is a polynomial, as you can see. We have a coefficients a n up to a zero, which are all constant. And we have the parameter, Laplace parameter s to the power n, and it will go to the lower order all the way to s to the power zero and you will have the right side zero. So you will have a form which is given in this uh, equation. For example, if you have a fourth order polynomial, fourth order system from a fourth order uh, control system or fourth order dynamic system, it is then written in the following form. So you have an A4, which is N, which is given uh, for the order. A4 times S to the power four, and then plus A3 times S to the power three, etc. As you can see, it will go all the way to a zero. So we have actually here one, two, three, four, five coefficients. Okay, the second step is you generate a data table called the root table, which is shown here for the fourth order system. We will work out this shortly in an example, and you will see how you set up this table and where you need to place the required parameters. As you can see here, the a4, a3, a2, a1, and a0 are already placed in a uh, standard form. So we have an a4 here, then a3 there, a2, a1, a0. If you don't have the next term, you will just place a 0. If you have, of course, more, you will have to make a larger table. Okay. And the final one is you interpret uh, your root table to tell how many closed loop poles are in the left hand plane, the right health plane, and on the y-axis. Now, if you're interested in the stability, you will only look actually at your right health plane poles. Okay, let's look at the interpretation of your root table. Now, considering the following characteristic equation, just an example of a closed loop system, which is a third order situation here, we can set up actually our 
root table shortly. So root Herbert's criterion declares that the number of roots of the characteristic polynomial that are in the right half plane is equal to the number of sign changes in the first column. This will be clear shortly when we have the table. So if you now look at a table, just a general form again for our third order system, you can see we have the third order system. And if I now set up the general polynomial and compare that to the given transfer function, I can now just look at the uh, parameters, which is a3 is equal to 1, a2, which is also equal to 1, a1, which is 2, and a0, which is the constant, which is 24. So I have to insert those values in here. And this, what you see here, b1, b2, b3, c1, c2, and c3, will be calculated using the formulas given here. And this is actually the determinant formula, which is from the matrix and uh, vectors theory. Okay, so actually you need an algebra. So if I now continue, and the corresponding root table will be shown here. So this is 1, as you can see, 1, 1, 1, 1. This will be 2 and 4. And I don't have this part, so I will place this 0 and 0. The B1 is just calculated by using A3, A2, so these four elements, and place it in the matrix and determine that the, the determinant of that and place a minus sign in front and divide it by A2. Now, if you do the math there, you will get minus 22. In a similar form for C2, one, you need A2 and B1, so A2 and B1, this one, and A0 and B2. But in order to calculate, of course, C1, I need B2. So B2 requires A3 and B2, I mean A2 and the, the 0 and 0 here, so the next column, two parts. So if you place that here, you will get a B2. Since these are zero, you can calculate it for yourself, this will result in zero. So B2 will be zero. And that results uh, in for C1 as 24. So if you now look at the situation, you will have, we see now two sign changes in the first column, which is now required because if you look at the first column, that determines our stability. So we have two roots in the right health plane. So the number of sign changes is equal to the number of right half pane poles or roots. And there is one root, of course, in the left half plane. Why? Because this is a third order system. So I need another pole, which must be, of course, in the left half plane, because these are now the two right half plane poles. So I have a one change here, which is shown here. The first sign change, another sign change is here. So I have two sign changes, that means two poles on the right half plane. Okay, it means actually this system is unstable considering actually the first row of this root table. So that is actually for this example, as you can see, it is not really that difficult if you set up your characteristic equation from your transfer function and then determine your values using this general form. If you have, of course, a second order system, this is, of course, a smaller table. If you have a fourth or a fifth order system, this will be, of course, a larger table. But the general idea is that you need to set up your table, compare it to the general formula for your polynomial, which is already discussed, and then compare the results, and then substitute the values and work out this table. And then discuss for yourself and determine if there are any sign changes present. Of course, there are uh, special cases when you, for example, have a, maybe a zero here and it is not a really a sign change. What you then do is, this is a different story and I will discuss it also in another video. So that is just a very elementary example to discuss the situation of how to work out a stability problem of a system using root Herbert's stability criterion. And this is actually for this example, and I'll see you next time. And take care.